I'm Anna Brannick and Sweeney, and welcome to the Look and Cook video. We'll begin by learning about food groups, then we'll go shopping for groceries, and then we'll make and eat lunch. In order to do all this, I'm going to need some help. So let's meet my friends and begin with part one, food groups. Did you know that food comes in groups? Well, they do, and there are four of them. The milk group, the meat group, the fruit and vegetable group, and the bread and cereal group. These groups are important because to eat well, you should eat something from each group every day. Learning these groups is also important because it'll help you find the recipes in the cookbook. And it'll help you find the food in the grocery store. Now this cheese is from the milk group. Let's look at some more food that's made from milk. cream looked good. Now these hot dogs are from the meat group, but there are many different kinds of foods in this group besides meat. Let's look at some. the nice fruit and vegetable group is that a lot of times you can eat them without even cooking them. You can also grow quite a variety yourself.
bread and cereal group is next. Everything in this group comes from grain, like wheat and oats. Hmm, this looks good. You know something? Even after nibbling on all of that food, I'm still really hungry. So I ordered a pizza. Oh, great, it's here already. 9.50? Oh, thanks. Here's, keep the change. Thanks. You know, this pizza is really interesting because it contains all four food groups. The crust is from the bread and cereal group. The cheese is from the milk group. The sausage is from the meat group. And the green pepper is from the fruit and vegetable group. Well, as hungry as I am, I know I can't eat all of this by myself. Hey, would any of the camera crew like to help me eat this? Yeah, I thought so. <laughs> A salad. A salad. Pudding. And pudding. pudding. Okay. Do you like pudding? Yeah. What's for lunch? I don't know. We should talk about it. Are we having hamburgers? Hamburgers? That sounds like a good idea. What should we have to go along with our hamburgers? What do you think? I want french fries. Mm-hmm. That sounds good. What else what should else? we have? A salad. A salad. And pudding. And pudding. Okay, I'm gonna go get the shopping carts. Oh, well, now we'll go shopping. With Tracy? Yes. Okay. Right? You like chocolate pudding? Okay. No. <laughs> okay. So we need some ground beef. Mm-hmm. And buns. Mm-hmm. And... Tomato. Yeah, for a salad. Milk for pudding. Okay. And... French fries. Your favorite French fries? <laughs> you like French fries. And peaches. Oh, you like peaches for tomorrow, Yes. Huh? Okay. That's it. That's it. That's Here are your shopping cards. Okay. Let's go shopping. See you later, Lindsay. See you later. All right. Bye-bye. Bye, big man. These are the items Claude and Tracy are going to buy. They can be found in different sections in the supermarket. Remember, all supermarkets are different, but they all have similar sections. Now, let's watch them shop. Bye. Bye. Tomatoes are the first on the list. They're for the salad.
That's convenient. The French fries are right across the aisle. It's important to know the size of the package you want. The ground beef is for the hamburgers. Hi, Claude. Hi, Claude. How are you guys doing today? Fine. Oh, fine. Nice business. Great. Hey, How's fine. Alan? Oh, thank you. Good. 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 There are a lot of items in a grocery store that are not food. The canned peaches are for tomorrow. Well, the hamburger buns are the last item on the list. We forgot the buns. Tracy have finished shopping and have everything they need for lunch. Let's make lunch, and I need everybody to help me. All right, Ellen. I'm going to make the hamburger. Oh, good. All right, that's right. That's very good, Bob. 
And I'll make the salad. And I make the pudding. What shall I do? Now we're going to show Claude doing each step of the hamburger recipe. You may want to follow along in your cookbook. Let's begin. Step 1. Chop the onion. Step 2. Put the meat, onion, egg, salt, and pepper in a bowl and mix with a fork. Step 3. Shape into hamburgers. Step 4. Put the pan on the stove on yellow. Step 5. Place the hamburgers in the pan. Step 6. Set the timer for 5 minutes. Steps 7 and 8. When the bell rings, turn the hamburgers over with the spatula. Step 9. Set the timer again for five minutes so the other side can cook. Steps 10 and 11. When the bell rings, turn the stove off to white. Step 12. Place the hamburgers on the rolls. C'est magnifique. Tracy is learning how to make pudding. Notice that when she finishes each step, she crosses it off. This doesn't mark the cookbook if you use the plastic covers. And just put two cups of milk in. Right. Okay. So you then just put the pudding mix in. Okay. Two on three. Okay, the bell rang so you, you can stop and cross out the bell. The time. 
and the bell. Okay, what are you going to do now? Bob is going to bake french fries. Notice how he uses the oven mitts. It's very important to be protected from the heat of the oven. By the way, when the fries are done, it's time to eat. This is a very interesting cookbook. It's full of pictures, so you don't have to read to use it. But you do have to learn the meaning of the pictures. There are 80 recipes here, and they're all organized in the same way. On the top, you have a list of all the things you need to make the food. Below this, you find pictures and words showing each step of the recipe. The pictures in the cookbook represent utensils you use to make the recipes, such as the wooden spoon and pitcher, a bowl and small bowls, oven mitts, and a baking sheet. To help you learn the meaning of the pictures, we made a music video. This is how it works. First, you see the real object. Then, you see the picture that's in the cookbook. And finally, we'll tell you the name of the object. You may want to use the list that's in front of the cookbook to follow along. Okay, let's learn those pictures.
baking sheet. Beater. Blender Bowl Brush Can opener Colander Cutting board Frying pan with lid. Glass. Knife for cutting. Knife for spreading. Ladle. Loaf pan. Measuring cups. Measuring spoons. Mug. Oven. Oven mitts. Pitcher. Large pot with lid.
small pot with lid. Rack. Small bowl. Square pan. Spatula. Spoon. Tea kettle. Timer. Toaster. Tongs. Wooden spoon. Phew! I'm glad that's over. There is a lot of information in there. You may need to watch that more than once to remember all of that. There's one more thing you need to know to use this cookbook, and that's the meaning of the colors. When you cook, you have to know how hot the oven is, or what size measuring cups or spoons to use. Well, we use colors to help you learn. The handles have colors on them. The biggest is red, and the smallest is green. It's easy to color them by using tape. Colors are also on the stove and oven to help you learn how they work. The stove has four colors. The stove is off now, so it is turned to white. The lowest temperature is blue, then yellow, and the hottest is red. Here the stove is being turned on yellow. The oven works the same way. White means it is off. Blue is the lowest, yellow is next, and red is the hottest. Oven temperatures are measured in degrees. Blue means the oven is on 350, yellow is 375, and red is 400 degrees. Now watch how the colors help Bob learn to make instant coffee. All right, the next step is to put the kettle on the stove and turn the burner on red. Very good, okay. The next step is to put the yellow spoon of coffee into the cup. You wanna do that, Bob? Very good, okay, good. Uh, Bob, since we, the water still isn't ready, let's practice measuring with a measuring cup. Okay. This is a blue cup, okay? okay? And in order to measure with a measuring cup, you have to make sure 
that you fill the cup all the way to the top and then level it off. Okay? Hold it tight. Very good. This meal came from recipes in the Look and Cook cookbook. What's Look and Cook? A picture cookbook you can use without knowing how to read. It was created by Ellen Soodle, who's taught home economics for over 15 years to adults with developmental disabilities. Well, the Look and Cook cookbook is a picture cookbook designed for people who um, would like to learn how to cook but can't read. Inside, 80 simple picture recipes, from tomato soup, to minute rice, to fish sticks. Most use name brand foods. Why? Well, when I started working on trying to devise a system that, that my students could use, I discovered quite by accident that that they knew name brand product foods. At the top of each recipe, there's a photo of the main ingredient. Simple icons are used to show what else is needed. Next, each step of the recipe is illustrated clearly and simply. And at the bottom, there's a picture of the finished product. Each recipe is complete on one page and therefore you don't have to worry about where recipe begins and ends. You look at the one page and it's all there. It takes the guesswork out of measurements by color coding them with these rolls of tape. Instead of a half cup of sugar, the recipe calls for a yellow cup. Then it's as simple as matching the color in the recipe with the color on your cup. You don't have to be able to discriminate size or fractions or anything with using this system in the book. The color coding works for stove and oven dials, too. Put the pot on the stove on yellow. The cookbook comes in a handy standalone easel binder and is divided into food groups like milk, meat, fruit and vegetables, bread and cereal, desserts, and beverages. There's also a few written words for the instructor or another reader. The word cues were kept simple so that if someone was learning to read or had a minimal amount of reading ability, they could use this system and maybe learn to read better and also learn to cook better too. Also available are 40 lesson plans. with safety tips. I teach them to turn their pot handles inward so that they are not tipped over accidentally. When um, we learn about the oven, uh, they use long oven mitts rather than short ones or pot holders so they don't burn themselves. And as an alternative to using a knife and cutting board, you can use a food chopper. And learning activities. The lesson plan suggests that you develop a picture file with your students. Students just look in magazines or newspapers and clip out pictures of name brand products and file them away and then they're used to either make uh, food group charts or to make shopping cards. Each lesson lasts about an hour. One lesson a week sets the curriculum for an entire year. The lessons not only cover cooking skills, but also nutrition and shopping skills as well. For instance, if you're teaching uh, about the milk group, students can learn what's in the milk group, then they can go shopping and find out that the milk is found in the dairy section of the supermarket, and then return to the class and prepare a recipe using milk. There's also the Look and Cook video, which shows an overview of the program. 
with segments on food groups, shopping, making lunch, learning the pictures, and an interview with Ellen Sudel, the author. If you've mastered the look and cook recipes, you might want to try the home cooking recipe book, which builds on the knowledge you've already learned from look and cook. It's also a picture cookbook, but the recipes are more complex and they're also from scratch. The book contains lots of my favorite recipes and I hope they become favorites of yours too. Look and cook, picture perfect recipes from attainment.